Are you ready to learn a bunch of small details and facts about Attack on Titan? Of course you are. Let's get started. <laughs> we all know Attack on Titan begins with Eren waking up from his dream. But did you ever notice the things he saw in his vision? He saw the Tiber armor and the Tiber toys, meaning he saw memories of Laura Tiber. After the breach of the Shinganshina walls, Eren was seen discussing about the event with the rest. However, did you notice that when he was speaking about the armor Titan, the camera immediately pointed at Raynor? <laughs> Not only that, but when he was speaking about the Colossal Titan, the camera zoomed out so that Berthold would fit in the panel. In Season 1, we witness a character that highly resembles Eren. This was not the only case, as we see this mysterious man in two other cases as well. While all of us were in Season 1 enjoying the show, Captain Eren was all the way to Season 4. The reason being that he already knew that the real enemy are not the Titans, hence asking Eren, who do you think the real enemy is? One of the most epic moments in Attack on Titan was when Reiner and Bertold confessed about being the Armored and Colossal Titan, respectively. But did you ever pay attention to Reiner's words? He said he was a failed warrior, hinting to Marley's warrior program. The warriors were not only foreshadowed on this instance, but in many more, actually. When Bertold was speaking about Reiner, he said that Reiner was more of a warrior in the past. When Annie witnessed the dead people of Paradise, she said, I am a failed warrior hinting again at Marley's warrior program. Not only that, but at this particular scene, Annie was also saying, I am sorry to the dead people of Paradise, as if their death were her own fault. Well, we now know that indeed they died due to her and the rest of the warriors. Eren Kruger is without a doubt one of the fan favorites. His last words to Grisha, however, showed what a masterpiece Attack on Titan truly is, and we will explain why. Kruger said to Grisha, If you want to save Mikasa, Armin, and everyone else, you must complete your mission. At that point, we did not know how Kruger knew about Armin and Mikasa. However, we later find out about the Attack Titan's ability to access memories of future holders. Not only that, but there was another small detail regarding this incident. When Grisha were to transfer the Attack Titan to Eren, the words he used were the same words Kruger used. If you want to save Mikasa, Armin, and everyone else, you must learn to use this power. Another small detail regarding Eren Kruger is the fact that Eren Jaeger starts using a knife to transform, instead of biting his hand, only after accessing the memories of Kruger, and seeing how he used to transform. On this scene when the tower collapsed, did you notice that Bertold was ready to bite his hand in order to transform? When Eren got injured on the head during his Survey Corps training, steam was seen emitting from his wound, hinting at his Titan abilities. Marco's birthday, the 16th of June, is the exact middle of the year as if his birthday split the year in half. Too bad he also got split in half. Many of the Titans we saw were later revealed in their human forms, with most of them being partners of Grisha in his efforts to restore the Eldian Empire. The right hand of Grisha, Greece, is Falco's uncle, hence their last name and their resemblance on their facial characteristics. In Grisha's backstory, we witness a boy shouting at Grisha. Recognize him? This is actually Tom Xaver. This particular panel with the ball throw between the Jaeger brothers was meant to be a direct reference to the pack of the devil we heard so much about in Season 1, with Eren resembling the devil and Zeke resembling Ymir the founder. Also in this scene, Eren purposefully did not catch the ball that was thrown at him by Zeke, and hence validating their deal. That was also the main reason why Zeke started being suspicious of Eren, whether he would go forth with the euthanization plan or not. When Reiner attacked the female Titan, before getting in her range of attack, he unmasked himself so that Annie would see who that person was and hence not kill him. When Eren was fighting the female Titan, Eren recognized the fighting style of Annie. When Eren was about to say her name, however, Annie immediately beheaded him, leaving Eren's sentence incomplete. When the Beast Titan appeared, these three were the most surprised, as if they knew something. Well, that's because they actually did know something. When the Jaw Titan appeared, Bertold and Reiner were stunned. The reason being that they knew that this titan is the Jaw Titan, and it also the titan that ate their friend, Marcel, the previous owner of the Jaw Titan. A small fun fact for the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood fans, Edward's mother and Eren's mother share the same Japanese voice actor, Yoshino Takamori. I kind of see a pattern here. In opening 5 for just a frame, we can see Armin's burned body, which by the way was put there before we actually witnessed Armin becoming a burned toaster. Isayama openly admitted that he is a fan of both Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones. Therefore, he could not miss the opportunity to include some Easter eggs regarding these iconic shows. In this manga panel, the Titans shown are designed after Attack on Titan characters. That panel was not the only case, actually. This Titan is identical to the real-life Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. Not only that, 
It has also been confirmed that Falco was inspired by Jesse Pinkman from Breaking Bad. Any UFC fans will love this fact. The armored titan physique was inspired by the UFC fighter Brock Lesnar. Did you ever think why Eren chose that specific moment to attack and eat Willie Tiber? Why not later or before? The reason being that Eren was patiently waiting for Willie Tiber to finish his sentence, a declaration of war. As soon as Willie finished his sentence, Eren storms in and attacks Marley. The significance of this sentence is that Eren wanted to show to Marley that they brought this disaster on themselves. Eren's message was that Marley caused the war and that Eldia is just fighting back. In the events of the Survey Corps training, during the hand-to-hand -hand combat training, Reiner says to Eren, Here, now you play the bad guy next. Well, I suppose Eren took his role pretty seriously. When Eren was fighting the female titan in his berserk form, he says, I will destroy the whole world. <laughs> Of course, at that point, no one really believed him. After all, he is the protagonist of the series, right? Well, think again. The rumbling was seen in the ending credits of Season 2. It was there in front of our eyes the whole time. Many people were thinking that Reiner and Berthold capturing Eren but not killing him or eating him did not make sense. However, we later find out the reason for that. They did not have the authorization to kill a Titan Shifter. If they did, the power of that titan would respawn into a random Eldian child being born at that time. Hence, the titan ability would probably fall into the hands of Eldia once more. So, why not eat it then? Because again, they did not have the authorization to do so. Their order was to bring the titan shifter back so that another person could eat it, and hence increase Marley's titan numbers. If they disobeyed these commands, their families could be at risk. The pointy ears on the titans is a feature of the Jaeger family. Grisha, Eren, and Zeke all have pointy ears in their titan forms. Someone could argue that this may be a feature of the titan and not the person. However, we know this is not the case, as we saw Eren Kruger's attack titan not featuring pointy ears. This is also the case for the previous holders of the founding titans as well. The pointy ears feature is probably a reference to the devil Ymir made a pact with, as we see him having pointy ears as well. Eren's appearance in Season 1, 2, and 3 resembles that of his mother, Carla. Hence, when Zeke met him, he told Eren, you look nothing like your father. In Season 4, however, his appearance started shifting into resembling that of his father. Hence, Zeke telling him, you now start to look like Dad. In the anime, Hanji Zoe is clearly female. However, in the manga, things are not that clear, as her sex and gender is not specified. When asked about it, Hajime Isayama replied that it's up to the reader to decide, and either way, he is fine with it. While everyone called Zeke's Titan a monkey, Reiner and Berthold called him by his official name, the Beast Titan, hinting that they knew something about him. When Ymir read the can, the fact that she could read what was written on that can meant she came from Marley. However, the thing that gave Reiner away was that when Ymir said that the can contained herring, Reiner did not ask what it was. Herring is a saltwater fish, meaning a person from Paradise could not possibly know what a herring is. In Season 4, Part 1, during the raid on Liberio, Zeke said that Eren Jaeger is not my enemy. We later find out that indeed, Zeke had no intention to fight against his brother. In opening two, Raynor, Berthold, and Annie were put on the left side of the screen, while all the rest were out on the right, symbolizing the three of them being separated from the rest. Opening seven is basically written from Eren's perspective. All I ever wanted was to save your life. I never wanted to grab a knife. This is a direct reference to the past. In the past, Eren was forced to use violence and literally grab a knife so he could save Mikasa from the human traffickers that planned to enslave her. However, this is also a reference to the future as well. This is because Eren chooses to use violence in order to save everyone that he cares about, aka the people of Paradise. Another detail about Opening 7 is that Eren is alone. He is with other people only in his throwbacks, symbolizing him being distanced from his friends due to the course of action he chooses. The line, if I lose it all, slip and fall, I will never look away, means that Eren is determined to do what it takes, no matter what the consequences. He has no regrets over his actions, and he did what he did to save his friends' lives. He would do it again if he had to. In Ending 7, Eren basically answers Mikasa's questions from Ending 1. In this cruel world, Eren responds with, This world is cruel, but I still love you. On the question, just what are we protecting, Eren responds, even if I sacrifice everything, I will protect you. Sasha's final words of Niku, that translates to meat in Japanese, could be, of course, referring to meat. 
However, there is another interpretation for Niku. It could possibly be the nickname she gave to her lover, Niccolo, and hence, calling him in her final moments. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe and check out these videos as well. Until next time, bye!